Yes, time now for my weekly matchup show. It's the Sooners and the Kansas Jayhawks. That's right, this week I'll be previewing OU at Kansas. Three words might have popped into most of your heads just now when I said that. Why even bother? I mean, you got Oklahoma, fourth in the country, needing one more win to clinch a spot in the Big 12 title game. And by the way, they win this week, they win next week against West Virginia, and win the Big 12 title game in Arlington two weeks from now. They're going to win the Big 12, and in my opinion, they're going to go to the college football playoff in pretty good shape. Teams already won five games in a row, and all practical purposes have the Heisman Trophy winner on it in Baker Mayfield. Sooners, 9-1, riding high, coming off a big win over TCU. Kansas Jayhawks have lost nine games in a row. Kansas Jayhawks are one of the worst teams in college football. Kansas Jayhawks football team has only won one game this season. By the way, the men's basketball team, who, again, will have another terrific year under Bill Self in Rock Chalk Jayhawk land, they've already won two games in the month of November. That's more wins for the men's basketball team, even though the men's season has barely started, than what the football team has done since early September. That pretty much sums up what must be going on in Jayhawk land as far as optimism for their athletic department. Men's basketball, they're going to kick butt. Kansas football is going to get their butt kicked. And that is just the way it is until something big time changes. And I don't see that happening anytime in the foreseeable future. This Saturday, it's senior day. And the Jayhawks are a 37-point underdog for that 2.30 kickoff on ESPN. Don't be surprised, by the way, if you see a lot of Sooner Red in the crowd. I imagine getting a ticket for this game is not going to be the hardest thing in the world. It's not like trying to get a ticket for a Rolling Stones concert or trying to get a ticket, by the way, for the Super Bowl. Getting a ticket for OU at Kansas, i got to imagine, will be a little bit easier than that. Before we break down the Sooners and the Jayhawks, talk a little bit about the latest college football poll. Uh, the playoff poll, which came out on Tuesday, Alabama, the new number one, uh, Clemson, you know, number two. By the way, the last two national champions, one and two in the polls, and you have Miami coming off that um, win, a huge win over Notre Dame at number three, Oklahoma number four, and Wisconsin undefeated but at number five. Now, there's a lot of Sooner fans upset that the Sooners are not ranked higher than number four. Well, to me, it doesn't matter. Okay, and I'm going to bring up the following, okay? When you have the number one total offense in all of college football, when you have a guy who will win the Heisman Trophy in Baker Mayfield unless an unbelievable collapse happens and or another candidate just emerges out of nowhere, okay? When you have all those things wrapped together, five-game winning streak, you've beaten Ohio State, Oklahoma State and TCU, and by the way, those first two opponents I mentioned were on the road. And to me, if you can win these last three games, the Sooners aren't going to be number four, okay? They're going to be a cinch to be number three and possibly number two. So the rankings are going to work themselves out because with the loss by Notre Dame this past week and with Georgia losing, which assures us, by the way, that uh, we're not going to have two SEC teams get into the college football playoff unless something real bizarre happens or a series of bizarre things happen, you can bet your bottom dollar that the Sooners are going to be in the top three and have plenty of padding entering the college football playoff in terms of those final rankings, which, by the way, will come out uh, Sunday, December the 3rd. We're getting closer to it, just a little more than two weeks from now. And the thing that I really love about this Sooner team is the fact that they have a combination of of veterans and new guys, and when you put them together, it's one hell of a team, especially offensively. Veterans, of course, like Baker Mayfield, um, you know, finishing his final year possibly as a national champion. You know, because the Sooners, I know defensively there are some issues, but offensively there's nobody better in college football, and there's nobody you'd rather have on your team than number six for Oklahoma. You know, veterans like the tight end, Mark Andrews, an offensive line just filled with veterans. And then on the defensive side, plenty of experience with Stephen Parker at safety. Obviously, Oboe, you know, bringing the charge, you know, with his presence in rushing the quarterback. I mean, you've got veterans and, of course, a um, experienced kicker in Austin Seibert, as well as punter. 
And of course, the newer guys, okay? We're talking about, you know, Rodney Anderson for the first time, you know, knock on wood, proving what he can do without worrying about injury, you know, an injury-free season. And so far, um, his stock has continued to do this, just soar. And then Trey Sermon, you know, a reliable player. Marquise Brown, you know, the junior college stud. Obviously, C.D. Lamb, the freshman, might be the most talented of the bunch. So, defensively, you're looking at some other guys, too. Trey Brown, Trey Norwood, not too shabby for their starting debut against TCU this past week. I thought they played a real good game. And, of course, um, you take all those into one bowl, mix them together, you got yourself a title contender. I mean, can Oklahoma win the whole thing? My answer to you is, why not? Okay, because you, you look at it, the contenders, as good as they are, there are some questions about them, like, you know, Wisconsin. Um, undefeated, sure, good defense, sure, but offensively, at times, a little shaky, a little inconsistent at quarterback. And by the way, who the hell have they beaten this year? And then, you know, you look at Clemson. You know, sometimes, you know, they win games by margins that really aren't wide, okay? They get the job done except against Syracuse, but they're not always impressive on the scoreboard. You know, for example, you know, Florida State, it was a three-point game this past week, entering um, the final few minutes before Clemson pulled away in the end. I mean, it was 17-14. to 14. Tigers only led by three midway through that fourth quarter. So, yeah, Clemson's had some shaky moments at times, too. You know, in Miami, you know, they finally got that big win against Notre Dame, but part of that, they really hadn't beaten too many good teams. And then, yeah, I remember Florida State struggled this year. Miami was fortunate to get out of that game with the win. And Bama, you know, they've been injury-prone these past um, few games, and you know, they were fortunate to have pulled off that victory at Mississippi State this last Saturday, pulling off in the final minute. We saw the, you know, the flaws that Georgia has, you know, um, that Georgia had um, against Auburn. They showed that they're mortal, too. Offensively, you know, not getting the job done. And defensively, for the first time all year, bending against Auburn. So, you know, you can talk about Oklahoma's defense having problems, although I thought this past week, you know, especially in the second half against TCU, they showed that they can play some quality football. Okay, so all the teams ahead of Oklahoma, they do have notable flaws, just like the Sooners, but the Sooners have the top offense in the game. So I think right now the sky's the limit for Oklahoma, and they could very well, the Sooners, you know, be looking at making a lot of noise in that college football playoff. Of course, three games to go if you count that Big 12 championship game. You're taking on a Kansas team that, um, yes, Big-time struggle. Nine losses in a row, only one Big 12 win over the past three seasons. But I will say this, though, okay? If you're thinking that Kansas is going to fire Coach David Beatty, unlikely the Chancellor of Kansas not only um, didn't indicate that that would happen, but he actually gave um, Coach Beatty and the Kansas AD a vote of confidence. So I would expect Coach Beatty to be the coach at, at this time next year. And probably a good thing from a Kansas perspective because the one thing that really hurts a program um, is when sometimes you pull the trigger too early and fire somebody because obviously that means you could lose recruits. You're going to have to adapt sometimes to a new offense, new philosophy, new way of playing football, and that takes time. Okay, So anytime you make that coaching change, yes, it's going to be put that program back even further. Yes, even a program like Kansas when you don't think they could go any further back. Um, offense this year at times has been inconsistent. In fact, a lot of times this year has been inconsistent, and the defense has simply bended way too much, especially when it comes to trying to um, cover receivers. Um, this past week, Carter Stanley, you know, not too bad of a job. Got to remember, Kansas fell behind early against Texas, down 28-7. Kansas fought hard. I will say this, the Jayhawks, did not quit in that game in Austin. Carter Stanley, he did throw three picks, but he also threw for three touchdowns. And these last three games, at least, Kansas offensively looks like they're getting better. Big problem for them, though, even though the passing game was Steven Sims Jr. having a good year at receiver for the Jayhawks. Running game-wise, there's really not much there. Okay, In fact, at times it's non-existent. Last week, their leading rusher was the quarterback, Carter Stanley, and he barely had over 40 yards on the ground. It's been a struggle trying to get a ground game going this year for Kansas. And um, Kansas defensively, is there anything that you can brag about? I think their defensive line is decent, especially when you have Dorrance Armstrong Jr. 
This guy will be playing in the NFL, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a very highly talented defensive end gets to the quarterback. This year, his stats not quite as high as what we've seen before. Biggest reason for that, he's drawing double teams and at times drawing triple teams as well. And I will say another good thing, too, linebacker uh, Joe Deneen, um, one of the leading tacklers in all of college football. Not much gets past him. But pass defense-wise, Kansas just stinks in this area. Baker Mayfield should not only have a very big game, but by the way, uh, probably won't play much in the second half if this game goes the way we think it's going to go. After all, the Sooners are a 37-point favorite. My final thoughts on this game, barring Oklahoma coming down with the flu or something else and Kansas playing the perfect game and Oklahoma making mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake, yeah, look for the Sooners. What, what the game starts at 2.30 on Saturday. Yeah, look for the game to be over by 3.30. That's how it should go if it plays out the way we think it's going to play out. 52-14 is my final score. I do think Kansas gets a couple of touchdowns. Again, their offense has shown some improvement. But there's no running game and defensively all kinds of problems. After all, it is 9-1 versus 1-9. Let's not forget that. Sooners should roll. And, of course, one more Big 12 game to go after this one as far as regular season, West Virginia, a week from Saturday. Sooners should win with plenty of comfort. 52-14 is my prediction. Don't forget, my three picks coming your way uh, later in the week on this very webpage, so check it out. My Oklahoma-Kansas postgame, I'm going to tell you right now, will be on Sunday. Okay, It's, it's going to be on Sunday, just kind of a word in advance. Thanks for watching, and Boomer Sooner.